don't know how men become big. They are men of the presence. It's only men of the presence that are mighty in the kingdom. Bishop Oedipo is a lion. You see, we talk about revival and many things that God wants to do. The territories that we are still talking and making boast of in the north, it was men like Oedipo that conquered it. How many revivals is going on in Sokoto and Medjugorje because the impact of his ministry was in, in Kaduna? These were the men that conquered those land because they were lions. Some years ago, he bought a land and the talks came saying nobody will enter the land. He said if anybody steps into that land, he will be struck with irrecoverable madness. The next day by 10 a.m., three people were already mad. They ran away. They were they are lions. Men like WF Kumuye stood up and he screamed an alarm of holiness. And in his days, when he rained and shined like the sun. You couldn't even give a job to anybody. Those days they want to give job, they look for deeper lifers. You don't apply, they trust them. Because a man understood the systems of holiness. They are men of the mountain. You think things just happen? I sat on that Apostle room and he spoke. And then all my lost died. He didn't do a Bible study, he only gave a charge. How can a man deposit God in you so much? You came as a liar and suddenly you left. There's no discipline. Everything dies. They are men of the presence. Reverend, please walk towards a sick person and the cancer will go down. How is it possible? They are men of the presence. If Apostle Selma enters here now, he's a, mo he's a router. The man is a router. If he comes here now, there are many spiritual possibilities that will be happening on their own accord because Selma is around. You enter his meeting, things are happening even when he's not talking. They are men of the presence. It's not about the scriptures you know. People are joking, playing around with their lives. Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. You are, you ancient Zion's king. We cry out, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. I made up my mind that even if it's five minutes of my clip you will hear, you will not sin again fire will engulf you I, I will die to everything that is flesh in my days it will be heard that men fear the Lord you will hear you can't every demon that holds you down will run away there will be hunger strange you cannot explain it certainly you will pray without ceasing I don't know what you pursue but me I want to be popular among the immortals I want to be popular in the region of Zion so that when I show up I will walk in eternity like an immortal I will not be a colossus on the earth. In eternity, they will call me a patriarch. Have dead and vain priorities. Men of the mountain. It's on the mountain that the will of God is apprehended. On the mountain. Hey. Hush. I wish I had time. God will not commit anything serious to your life until you can climb the holy mountains. Nothing serious can be committed to you. If you like, quote all the scriptures and talk big, motivate yourself. Motivational speaking cannot move you in this kingdom. In Luke chapter 9, verse 26 to 34, that was when the kingdom was handed over to Jesus. It was on the mountain. Say six days later, he carried Peter, James, and John, and they went there. As he prayed, the faction of his countenance was altered. They appeared before him, Moses and Elias, and they talked with him. What were they talking about? The death in Jerusalem. That was when the will of the Father was made known to him. That for you to fulfill the claims of divine justice, you must die. And where you will die is in Jerusalem. You will not die in Galilee. You will not die in Nazareth. It's in Jerusalem. And you will die the death of the cross. That was when the testament of the law and the testament of the prophet was handed over to the kingdom. Because he climbed the holy mountain. He stood there and he would not come down if it took 10 years. You run to prayer. But tell me, you think it's about time to so apprehend the mind of God. What will God have you do? You follow people and think they will give definition to your destiny. Who told you men make men? The mind of God. Why was Moses so strong? 
this guy had brought him to deliver Egypt, Israel. He knew that Israel was supposed to be delivered. This is the time. But he didn't know how to go about it. He went killing the Egyptian. How many Egyptians will you kill in a lifetime? And even if you kill all the Egyptians, who told you God wanted them to live in Egypt? The destination was not Egypt. They brought him through him until he went to the backside of the mountain. The Bible said he came to Horeb, the mountain of God. That was where God showed up and began to give him the blueprint of his will for Israel. The strategy was to challenge Pharaoh. The empowerment was the rod in his hand. And the mandate was to take them to the promised land. There was no way he would have known it until he ascended the holy mountains. Some of you are aware what God wants you to do. You are saying, yes, I think God, you will think all your life. You can never stumble on the strategy until you come to the mountain and hear the voice of God. Because the voice comes with the empowerment and it comes with the mandate. John said, the one that sent me, the same said unto me. The one that sent me. There is no missing word about it. The same said unto me, upon whoever the spirit descends and rests, he is the Messiah. He knew his mandate was to identify the Messiah. The strategy was baptism. So he was not baptizing because he learned a new way. He had it. He had it. He had it. Why? Because he was in the wilderness until the day of his showing forth unto Israel. He was there until the day. So for him, prayer is not an act you carry out and come back. Prayer is the life you are sentenced to until God leads you. Funny thing we do call Christianity. The will of the Father. It's on the mountains that the encounters of your destiny are. Many are trusting God to reveal things to them. Things are not revealed on land. They are revealed in the spirit. You can't have any encounter in this life walking in the flesh. Everybody that had an encounter with God had it in the spirit. Even at the worst moment of their life, this guy had mastered the way of the spirit until that was the only way they lived. John was sentenced from civilization to die. Frustration, nothing was working. You not even talk about family, they had none. At this time, everything, they were dead to everything. But even in Patmos, he said, I was in the spirit on the last day. That was when he was carried to heaven to show him all the dimensions of heaven. There were things shown to John that the, the angel told him, don't utter it. When the seven voices spoke, that one by reason of privilege, he's the only man that knows it in all eternity. The encounters of your life, they are on the mountains of God. You don't journey to the mountain for gate. Your life will be a puzzle. A stream of trial and error. And you will end up an average person. The greatest crisis of life is to know that you were born great. But end up small. Every day you will weep. That's why most people retire and they die after three days. When they were young, they knew they were going to rule the nation. But they lived for 65 years. And upon retirement, they ended up as custom officers. They ended up without impact. They knew the impact they were supposed to carry out. They didn't carry it out. So every day they sit outside. Their life is full of regret. They see the things they should have done they never did. Because they did not choose the way of surrender. You are living on campus. You think life ends on campus. Having fun and going for clubs and parties. You are a being of the, of the flesh. The Bible said a man in honor that knoweth not is like the beast of the field that perishes. Precious people that their lives are supposed to be vessels to give expression to dimensions of God. Precious ladies that their wombs are supposed to be gates through which kingdom and miseries are raised. They go to waste their lives for temporary pleasure because we are not taught the way of the mountain. That's where the difference of humankind lies. The encounters of your destiny are on the mountain. And life is a product of encounters. The encounters you have are what will change you. But if you don't know the way of the mountain, you will never have encounters. You will live by the stories men tell you. A preacher comes to them because you gave a very sound charge. He calls you and say you are an apostle. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father, you are seated on the throne. 